I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ, all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. Please let me know if you have any difficulty from your side. It looks like YouTube have a problem. Doesn't doesn't make sense. It says current view. It goes up 20, 30, don't go to 13, then go to 12. Look like YouTube having a problem. <clears throat> But anyway, just invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Uh, you know, YouTube suggests for me videos. And uh, I always we try to focus on things which is really important. Uh, doesn't matter how big, how small the person, you know. Uh, Sometimes a Muslim who is very small, he can say something very smart not like their sheikh you know and today we have a very smart muslim who is very small he said something very important uh, uh, this is a video of apostate prophet and uh, as you know the muhammadan they line up to debate with uh, if i can call it a debate i call it just a joke you know to to debate with apostate prophet but with me they hide in the corner and they don't dare to show or even to let me call them so let us hear what Apostle Prophet want to say to us and what happened exactly. Wait, 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 stop, stop. Can you answer the bloody Bible? Leave the Bible alone, you don't believe in it. In which I made the outrageous claim. That... <laughs> Let me play that again. <laughs> a few days ago, I had a very respectful discussion with these very friendly Muslim apologists. Wait, 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 stop, stop. Can you answer <laughs> He was quoting for him from the Bible. Look what happened to this Abdul. Wait, 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 wait. Stop, 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 stop. Wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> it's very funny that those cowards, they themselves, they quote the Bible when they want to prove to us that Muhammad is a prophet. And if we quote the same book to prove that Muhammad is a fraud, wait, 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 wait. Where are you going? What are you going? Wait, 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 wait. I remember opposite prophet is not even Christian he's an atheist right so why you're upset I mean he quote from a book as he wish what's your problem the problem is they are stupid and today we will show you an example of their stupidity the bloody Bible leave the Bible alone you don't believe Hamza. in it in which I made the outrageous claim that Islam treats the Kaaba as this center of worship for the Almighty Allah and for Abrahamic religion but in reality the Kaaba is entirely disconnected from Abrahamic religion from history and that it is merely an Islamic adoption from pagan times to build my argument I used the premise that the Quran says that the Kaaba was the first house built for Allah and that Allah tasked Abraham with with proclaiming this message of the Kaaba and of pilgrimage to the Kaaba to humanity. The point here is that if that was indeed true, if Allah in the past, in Abraham's time, did indeed give Abraham this big task, then this would of course mean that we would find the Kaaba somewhere in Abrahamic religion. This would mean we could verify historically that the Kaaba was indeed a place of pilgrimage and worship from around the world. When I made the point that according to the Quran, Abraham was supposed to deliver this message to mankind. Our dear friend Hamza made the objection and asked me where I get that from. I don't understand. The Quran gives Abraham and Ishmael the mission to spread this to the entire world so that everyone comes. This is the major what, what, uh, place. What, this is the do that? Mo mother no, no. of cities. Wait, mother wait, of wait, cities. Do that? And yet it has no history wait, within Christianity. Where does Allah say about Abraham and uh, Ishmael were sent to the whole world? Where are you getting that from? I didn't say they were. <laughs> and by the way, there is another Abdul, he made fun of uh, Abu Said Prophet because he said, I did not say that. So the Muslims, they agree that they are really, they have a bunch of idiots. And really they agree with this red-haired man who said where it says that Abraham, according to Islam, he will spread the religion to mankind. Listen carefully. And you will see uh, Muslim videos making fun of Abu Said Prophet saying that. Did you do that? Ma Mother no, of no. cities. Well, where where did you do that? Wait, wait. It has no history within Christianity. Where does Allah say about Abraham and uh, Ishmael were sent to the whole world? Where are you getting that from? I didn't say they were sent to the whole world. I said that... it's exactly what you just said. Did I say they were sent to the world? Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, if yeah. I said that. The issue oh, was. What did you mean then? They were told to tell the people from around the world to come to the. Are you said it again. 
do it again? You did it again, you idiot? You just did it again? <laughs> no wonder you open a store to sell panties for Muslim women. So this idiot who he is a convert and all of them they are the, and the rest of the team they are Muslim they are born Muslims all of them nobody says to this donkey you stupid idiot this is what the Quran is saying so they side against opposite, opposite prophet just to prove that he's wrong you know like uh, if I say Islam teach you to be a pimp what the Muslim will say where 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 he says that but if a Muslim he says that yes brother it says that <laughs> So now this donkey, he didn't agree that Abraham and Ishmael supposedly, supposedly want to spread the religion of Allah for humanity. And he is challenging his opponent, which is in this case, apostate prophet, where you can get that from. <clears throat> where you get it from? Wait, 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 wait. You're saying it again. Again, you idiot. Again, you do it. What's wrong with you? I didn't say they were sent to the whole world. I said that, it's exactly what you just said. Did I say they were sent to the world? Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I said that. The issue oh, was. What did you mean then? They were told to tell the people from around the world to come to the camp. You just said it again. <laughs> again. You just did it again. Is, is, isn't that tell what the Quran the people says? from around the world. So, sorry. How is it, Ishmael and I? No, one second. If, if I need to make a correction. Ishmael going to tell the people around the world. I found it very strange that Hamza actually made this objection and tried to argue that this is something that I just came up with. This is general knowledge. Let me show you exactly where I got this outrageous claim from. I take this, as I said, from the Quran itself. Apparently, I'm more informed about the Quran. In Apparently. Guys, those people who claim that they are going to argue with people about Islam and they want to prove Islam to be true. Can you believe that an atheist, an atheist, is teaching them what the Quran is teaching. Can you believe it? This guy is an atheist. He's an ex-Muslim, yes. But at the end of the day, he's an atheist. So how three, four Muslims sitting together in one room, or like in one live broadcast, and they are challenging him to show us where it says that? That because Islam is a religion of the ignorant. Quran chapter 22 verse 26 it says and mention when we designated for Abraham the site of the house saying do not associate anything with me and purify my house for those who perform tawaf circumambulation and those who stand in prayer and those who bow and prostrate and in 27 it then says and proclaim to humanity the pilgrimage, <laughs> the Hajj, or proclaim to the people, or proclaim to mankind. The word here is Nas, translated as mankind, used throughout the Quran again and again. <laughs> you know, it's really, it's really funny that we have people who claim to have religion, but their religion does not make sense. It's stupid. They can't explain it. They can't defend it. And even when they try to defend it, they prove us right. My Skype is open. If there is anyone can explain to us, first of all, how the stupid Quran says such a statement that Abraham and Ishmael, they went all the way to Mecca. Who want to explain to us what happened? Why they even go, went there? Anyone? Why Abraham and his wife, Hajar, <clears throat> not all the family, why they went to that location? Who want to explain to us? Who is a Muslim can explain to us? Anyone? You know, uh, We are talking about religion who believe that Alexander the Great is a prophet of Allah. Anyone is famous is a prophet of Allah. Al Khadr is a famous a fiction person who drunk drunk from the fountain of youth or life, and then he lived forever. He was in the funeral of uh, Noah, and he was in the funeral of Abraham. He was in the funeral of uh, 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 Moses and Aaron. And he was in the funeral of Muhammad. 
Why? Because he drank from the fountain of youth. Which explains why I'm still so young. I mean, now I'm supposedly at least uh, 200 years old, but still I look 17. That's because I drank from the fountain of youth. It's called Pepsi Cola. So when we ask the Muslims about their logic and their religion, where you get this religion from? Where, why Abraham, he went to that location? Where we can find the story? You see, if we go in the Quran, you will find suddenly the Quran mentioned Abraham or Ibrahim is raising the, the Kaaba. What is the story of Ibrahim coming to, the, uh, coming to Mecca? Where is Mecca? Read carefully with me. This is a chapter two. And by the way, one of the funny things about the Quran uh, that you cannot find a story in one place. Like, you know, in, in, the, in the Old Testament, if you want to find how God created the earth and the heaven, you go to the book of Genesis. Uh, if you, you know, like every book have a specific relation about certain things. You want to read the books of, uh, about kings, etc., you go to kings. Uh, in the Quran, if, you, if we type the word Ibrahim, I will copy the word Ibrahim as it is here, and I will paste in the search engine, are we going to find the story of Ibrahim or Aka Abraham in one place? Chapter 2. Chapter 2. Chapter 2. Chapter 3. Chapter 3. Chapter 4. Chapter 6. Chapter 9. Chapter 9, chapter 11, 11, 11, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 19, 21, 22, 26, 37, 37, 38, 42, 60, 87. If you want to understand uh, a story about anything. You know, remember, Abraham is from the past. Abraham is from the past, which means it is someone who came and he was before Muhammad. So his story should be in one place. It's okay to mention his name in different places, but not to repeat stories or to tell stories about the guy. I mean, why you don't mention it in one story, one place? So if you go here, because the Quran is made by a person who is, you know, have, suffering from flight of thought. So you will see here, like in chapter 26, Allah, he delivered Moses and he drowned everybody. Okay, this is about Moses and the Pharaoh. And this is a sign for people to remember who have faith. Wonderful. And indeed, your Lord is almighty. Okay, wonderful. And tell them, tell them about Abraham. Like, what the heck? What Abraham? Relate to them about Abraham. When Abraham, he said to his father, what are you worshiping? If you read with me, Does it make sense that Abraham is asking his father, what do you worship? Why he is not in the family? He did not see what they worship? What this question is about? They said, we worship idols. He said, do, you, do, do they hear you when you call them? Or they, do they bring you any benefit or cause you any harm? They said, indeed, we found our fathers doing likewise. He said, have you regarded what you have been worshipping? 
you or your ancestors. But all those questions we can ask about Allah. Muhammad himself, you see the Quran says Allah, he said to Abraham, but according to Muslims, Allah, he spoke only to Moses. There's only one person Allah spoke to, just one. He did not even speak to Muhammad. So if we put this an examination from Abraham to examine if this is a God to worship or not to worship, let us ask the same questions Abraham is asking to his family. Let us go back. Hey Muslims, what do you worship? They say we worship Allah. We will replace the word idol with Allah, which is an idol anyway. And we are going to be dev de devoted to Allah. Wonderful. He said, do they hear you when you call them? Hey Muslim, do Allah hear you when you call him? Do Allah hear you, Muhammadan, when you call Allah? The answer, no. Even Muhammad, he agreed with us. Muhammad, he said, that Allah He come down every third part of the night to the lowest heaven. <clears throat> Let us see the sign the hadith so we can read together. All right. Do Allah hear you Muslims? The Muslim will say yes. What is the proof? None. Because they never spoke to him. They never saw him. They never heard his voice. I'm just trying to find the hadith in English because this hadith have many version of it uh, in the translation. But we will find it here. Let us see where is the hadith. <clears throat> Let us try a different version in Arabic. The first one we try to find in this website. We could not locate. All right, so this is another hadith. Let us see here. Let us read this one. I heard the Messenger of Allah say, were it not that you would be difficult, it would be too difficult for my ummah I would have commanded them to use siwak every time for a prayer. Siwak is a root of a tree. Uh, the Arab, they use it to beat their camel with it. It's a long root. And the same time when they are sitting, you know, wasting their time, killing their time because they are sitting in the desert waiting for the animals to eat their, the grass uh, or the, the desert the grass, if we can call it the grass. Uh, they use the miswak, they put the end of the root in their mouth and they, you know, they chew it. So every time you pray, he will order you if he can do that. And then he says, uh, read carefully caref here. When, because when the first third of the night has passed, Allah, may he be exalted, descends to the first heaven and stay there until dawn, until dawn comes and he say, any, there is any, which means anyone asking, so I might be given. If there's anyone praying, so I might answer. 
So Allah, he go down where? He go down to descend to the lowest heaven. You know, how Allah is almighty and he is all hearing, yet he need to come down every third part of the night. So he will ask, what are you asking me for? Is that fit with the nature of this God? In the, you know, when, when Muhammad he says, Allah, he come in the third part of the night. And we can find the hadith in different version of it. And this is Al-Bukhari, the Muslim they cannot say. Al-Bukhari is the most authentic book for Muslims after the Quran, which both of them, they are not authentic. And actually, there is no book, it's called Al-Bukhari. Nobody can find it, it's not exist. But this is what the Muslims certainly believe that this is the most authentic, how it's authentic if you don't even have the book. Yeah. Allah knows best. So Allah, he said here, that the superior <coughs> uh, come every th third part of the night, uh, saying, if there is anyone there to invoke me. So where he come? He come to the third, uh, the third part of the night, and he come to the lowest part of the heaven. The Muslim believe that there are seven heavens, which is coming from the Greek mythology. Uh, and there is a lowest heaven, and this is the heaven where Allah, he seat every third part of the night. As you see here in translation, and this is a Muslim translation, and this is Sahih Muslim, and this is the reference. It says he come to the lowest heaven. When on the third part of the night, and this is telling us that Muhammad, he think that there is only one time zone. The whole earth have one time. And this God, he come in the third part of the night. Because if Allah, he come every third part of the night to the lowest heaven, uh, he have to go up and go down every maybe one hour, maybe. Depending on your location. Is that correct? So when the Quran speaking about Abraham, Abraham questioning his family or his people, do you speak to your God? No. Do he answer you? No. Do he, is he useful or harmful? Let us ask the same question to the Muhammad. If there is any proof that Allah is useful, my Skype is open by the way, if there is any proof that Allah is useful, if there is any proof that Allah is harmful, is Allah, if there is any proof that Allah exists. You see, I'm asking the same logic is written in the Quran, so you cannot say this is not logical. And the one is using this logic is your God. Any Muhammadan? <coughs> Anyone? Let me share my contact if anyone would like to. Uh... <clears throat> Actually, one of you, he told me that I can make a code to scan for my contact in Skype. Uh... It... Skype. Let us see. This is my contact for now. We will see if we can create a code so people they can scan easy in their phone and they can join us. All right. Any one of you is a Muslim who would like to join us and ask yourself the same question which you Muslims asking others about their belief. Anyone?
אני מוסלם. This is a very funny series stupid religion. The same question you ask to others is where you die. As an example, do they bring you any benefit or cause you any harm? Why Muhammad he kissed the black stone? Do kissing the black stone cause you any use, any useful thing or any harm? Muslims <clears throat> Anyone Not a single Abdul Why you Muslim don't use the same logic as in the Quran? Muhammad he kisses stones. Muslims go around the stone, they kiss the stone, they bow down in front of the stone, they bow to the Kaaba. What is the benefit? And why Allah don't speak to Muhammad? If the Quran is saying that Allah he spoke to Abraham, Allah he spoke to Isa, Allah he spoke to Moses, Allah spoke even to the ants. How come Allah don't speak to Muhammad? Any Muhammadan? Hello? So this argument, this debate is very funny, especially from somebody, supposedly his name is Abraham, who himself, he worship the stars. Because look, what his people, they worship in this verse. They worship idols, correct? Okay, let us go to a different chapter. We will find that the people of Abraham, they don't worship idols, they worship stars. And he himself, he worshipped the stars. So, did they worship the stars or they worship idols? In chapter 6, verse number 74, Abraham, he said to his father, Azar, tax it, text, text, whatever, which is, you know, Aramaic word. Uh, one of you, he asked where we can find the reference for the Azar. I will try to find you like a solid reference, but me, myself, I learned it from an Aramaic scholar, very powerful person, uh, about the meaning, which is foolish, which makes sense. So Abraham, he said to his father, Azar, and uh, which means foolish, are you going to worship Adol? It makes sense, right? I mean, if you replace the word Azar, so the stupid Muhammad, he was receiving books in Aramaic. You see, uh, uh, some might say, well, uh, what are you talking about? Muhammad, he is received uh, books in Aramaic. What, what, where are you guys from? Give me a second. Anything we say here, we have to prove it. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Okay, let's see if we can find this uh, this hadith in English. Give me a second.
Read carefully with me. Uh, the Messenger of Allah said he ordered me to learn some statement from writing of the Jews. So what Allah Messenger, he ordered him to learn some statement from the writing of the Jews for him. And he said, for indeed Allah, I do trust the Jews with my letters. He said, half a month, half a month did not pass before I learned I learn it. What uh, what books of the Jews we are talking about? It is the Syriac. The Syriac language. If you look here in the English, it doesn't say anything about the Syriac. If you look here in Arabic, it says Ta'allam as -Suryaniya. He ordered me to learn the Syriac language. So Muhammad, because he is a false prophet, he need to know what the Syriac books in the Jewish Talmud, because the Talmud have two versions. There's the Hebrew, there's the Syriac. So he want to know what the Syriac Talmud saying. What the Syriac book teaching. So he orders Zayd ibn Thabit, and actually, obviously, Zayd ibn Thabit, either he was himself, he used to be, uh, he grew up between the Jew. Uh, the reason I say that, because, uh, let me see if I can find the hadith. He used to grow, like, you know, when the Jews, they have two, like, uh, I don't know what the word in English, they have two uh, line of hair coming from their head. You know what I'm saying, right? If you ask yourself why he have such a thing, it doesn't make sense, right? I'm trying to find the hadith about him having those hair in the side of his head. Let us see. Actually, let's try here in the books of Hadith here in the, this website. Give me a second. I will find it. Anyway, so Zayd ibn Thabit, he have two... Let me find the picture of a Jew. I'm trying to find the word too, you know. Orthodox Jew. All right. Let us find a picture of a clear face of an Orthodox Jew. How they grow, here we go. So, Zayd ibn Thabit, he used to have those on his head. Now, if you ask yourself why in the world he have that? 
and why Muhammad he asked him to go and read what is in the Talmud of the Jews why he chosen him you know he chosen him for a reason this guy he grew up between the Jew obviously and he speak their language uh, but he is not so strong in the Syriac so Muhammad he ordered him like you know like he said to him how good you are in the Syriac language he said not much he said go and learn it why Zayd ibn Thabit need to learn the Syriac because Muhammad receiving books from the Jews he is receiving books from the Jews look there is a Muslim what we are saying is hurting his feelings so he said don't change the topic CP Mr. Hashem saying Mr. Hashem called me I did not change the topic we are talking about Abraham where Muhammad is getting his stories from why Muhammad who is inspired by Allah he need to learn what the Jews book saying correct guys why he need and why Allah don't teach him Syriac Isn't it him that is the prophet? Isn't it this is the language of Abraham? So the Muslim get upset. Let me try to find the hadith. I don't like to mention something without finding it. Give me a minute. But the important for us, let us see this one, uh, this one in Musnad Imam Ahmad, maybe we will not find it here. Uh, let us see. Yeah, Musnad Imam Ahmad is not exist in this website, I guess. But look uh, what we found here in this hadith. Uh, they asked Muhammad, how long it take to read the Quran, the complete recitation of the Quran? He said in 40 days. Then he said one month. Then he again said in 20 days. And then he said 15 days. And then he said in 10 days. Finally, he said in seven days. Even though we were looking for something different, but this is alone is enough to prove that Muhammad is a scam. I mean, if you read the Quran, if you need the re uh, how long we need to be able to recite the Quran. The question is very simple. I have a book. I'm going to recite the book. How long is it going to take me to recite the Quran? And by the way, all those numbers are wrong. He said 40 days. Then he changed it. He make it a month. Then he make it 20. Then he said 15. Then he said 10. Then he said 7. What does that mean? The Quran is shrinking. Is that correct? Because if the Quran is increasing in pages, then the number should be increased, not the opposite. So he start with 40 days. Then it become one month. So we took 10 days off. Then he took another 10 days off became 20 then now he did not take 10 days off he took 5 days off became 15 and now he did not take 10 days off 
he took again again took, he took five so now it's 10 days and then he did not now take 10 days he took three days and now it is seven so if we take this uh, into consideration too we will find that the Quran what the Muslim they have today is totally different from what the Quran the Muslims they have before if it was exist we have somebody trying to call us let us see the only one who tried to call us is Fakira <clears throat> So the question remain. Hello? Hello? Yeah, my friend, you are live on here. You're welcome. What do you want to say to us? Yeah, Al Habib, Shlonik. Hello, hello. Hello. So you guys are talking about Abraham, but uh, I'm not going to interfere with that. Um, I'm a confused Muslim, like they say. Why are you confused? <laughs> Well, it just it's it's how mo it's how my life started, you know. I mean, I was raised in uh, Bahrain, uh -huh. um, studied abroad, um, went to churches as a visit. Okay, I was still a Muslim. Um, your videos, so many other videos, so many lies, you know. So, so what do you mean? There's like too many my confusions videos, happening. Is, you are saying my videos have lies, or what do you mean? I don't know. No, no, no. Your videos do not have lies. Okay. Yeah. You proved all the lies. Yeah. What do you think about what you just said now? I mean, with this guy, he is saying you can recite the Quran in 40 days. And then he can recite it. He changed his mind. He make it one month. And then he changed mm -hmm. it. He make it 20 days. And then he changed Too it to Too much 15. hashish. Too much hashish. Exactly. You know, this is a statement. It's cannot be from God. And the only explanation for this to be true, that the Quran is shrinking somebody deleting it pages is. from it right for sure yeah so my friend how 100%. i can help you today like you are confused about islam but you did not leave islam yet right you are from bahrain but you did not mm -hmm. decide to leave islam yet what is holding you i'm from on leaving? the edge why i need the strike i need the strike yeah, okay but tell me what is holding you so i can strike what what is holding you <laughs> <laughs> uh, well um basically there are so many things it's not about family. It's not about friends. It's not about that. Hmm. It's, um, you know, most of the callers that call you, yeah. you know, some of them that are on the edge, um, they speak about, you know, their soul, if you know what I mean. All right. Fear of the soul or like fear of. Let us, let us know, talk about this. Uh, I, I don't know what to call you. I don't know what to call. You. What's your name? You want to like to give Farouk. Me? Farouk. So Farouk, yeah. you know, uh, uh, how come I don't fear Allah? A question just think about it why you I were not fear? born with the fear you, you know i mean we went to school and um they doctrinated but us. i am like you i'm born in the middle east all our culture yeah. is about it's not about really believing in god as much as to fear god exactly you know we have the same even about government we don't respect government we fear government <laughs> right <laughs> We don't true, respect true. the law but we fear the law <laughs> yeah you know so it's a culture of fear and uh, you know like uh, it's a it's a culture like you have to you have to stick and you have it to have a stick in your hand because everybody is a donkey you have to have second thoughts all the time yeah and you know you you, you have to say something and you believe in something <laughs> exactly exactly like what you said i mean he recites it for 40 days and changes his mind yeah and 20 so days, uh, fear yeah. should not be a problem uh because i can see now actually i mean you killed your fear here we go you are talking to me using your voice i'll tell you i'll tell you exactly what killed my fear yeah all right um f around let's say 12 years ago yeah i had a dream okay uh, at the end of the dream i believe that i saw jesus i'm not sure if not but i believe so okay. the the dream was full of spiders and snakes and um you know things that are not nice to see uh, there are so many mountains and shadows and dogs and there was a white dog at the end that guided me to a door that door had a stair i tried to pass the stair halfway through and i see a being but without feet can love is thobe. it's like a thob you know mm -hmm. and um, it was holding a book the book was not halfway open but you know quarterly open and there was so much light behind him. 
I was trying to climb the, you know, just taking more steps. But uh, he was like, you know, can you meet the kitab? Can you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was like uh, bringing the book forward to me, but I was trying to reach, but there was something pulling me back, okay. like like a force. Yeah, not something physically mm-hmm. pulling me, like the, like a force. Mm-hmm. It woke me up from this dream. Yeah, and a year, like a year before today. Yeah, um, I was sentenced uh, to twelve months to jail. Okay. But um, but uh, I got out innocent after a month. Good for you. Uh, and, um, you know, the people inside, thank you, the people inside, you know, they were praying and, you know, people that were atheists became Muslim, like you see in the movies. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, in, in the cell, they used to tell me, hey, what about you come and pray with us? And I was like, you know, I'm not that religious. And um, they tried and tried. So I pretended. Yeah. Okay. So I pretended to pray, but my prayers were all to Jesus. Okay, so I was doing the Islamic movements, but, you know, I was mumbling whatever it is to Jesus. Um, a week later, Khan Andi Istinaf. Okay, I don't know what they call this in, in English. Appealing. Yeah, and I was innocent. All right. And I believe for some reason, there is a connection into the prayer and Jesus and um, the signs that I saw in the dream 12 years ago. And the only time I used Jesus was in jail. And a week later, I was out. And, Wonderful. Um, but what, make you, what made you, like when you start praying, with them, pretending to be praying like a Muslim, but what what made you like st- start praying to Jesus? I mean, did you ask yourself why I'm doing no, that? No, because I'll tell you I'll tell you why. Because you know, like I said in the beginning, you know, my father, you know, I had problems in school in Bahrain. So my father kicked me out and he sent me to a boarding school in in England. It was like a half military, half school. Okay. And every Sunday we used to go to the church. Mm-hmm. And uh, the first time I went into a church, it felt beautiful. It felt clean. There are no slippers outside. There's no slippers and there's no smell of socks. <laughs> you can leave. Yeah. Nobody will steal your shoes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, I'm gonna tell you, Faru. Just uh, I will give you a break from this. You know, once we, yeah. we were a you know, teenage, you know, in school, and we have a bunch of mm-hmm. teachers. They are all of them are idiot. So they went yeah. to the they went to the mosque, and we know which mosque they go to. So what we did, yeah. and you know, I was with them actually, and the rest are Muslims. So one of the mm-hmm. Muslims, he come with the idea to take the shoes and dump them in the dumpster. <laughs> 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 so everybody in the mosque <laughs> came out Where from the was, mosque yeah, looking for his shoes, out, I'm sure. <laughs> including our teachers. <laughs> anyway, continue, my friend. I'm listening. So uh, it was, it was, you know, beautiful, and it was, oh, it always felt like home, you know, when I went into a church. And then when I left uh, England, I came back to, to the Middle East. And when I went into a, into a, into a mosque, uh, it just felt different. You know, it just felt not my place. It felt weird. And seeing how people are, you know, in Ramadan, for example, yeah. is what I call when the devil comes and sits in the Middle East. Mm. This is when the devil makes his, you know, his work. All the parties are in Ramadan. All the prostitution begins in Ramadan. Fighting, all the shisha, violence, lying. Everything. And, everything. And we eat, yeah, and everything. we eat more. <laughs> exactly. And we eat more, yeah. And uh, drinking as they, as you know, in the picture, there are no drinks anymore, you know, only yeah. that month. And, you know, Bahrain is open when it comes oh, yeah. to these things. And um, even Bahrain in Saudi Arabia, open. you can get a drink, you know, alcohol so easy. Of course you can. Hey, it's so Yeah. Kil Makan. yeah. Yeah, yeah, black market is everywhere. Saudi Arabia, I mean, it's all underground, but still, you know, here they do it in the open. Uh, girls are not the same, you know, they're not covered and all of that. So it's more open, you know, it's more multicultural in Bahrain. So um, I was I was planning to visit the new church they built in Bahrain, if you heard about it. Okay. Uh, this is the one it's that called, uh, uh, just last week the Pope he visited. Yes, okay. the, uh, Our Lady of Arabia. All right. 
uh, it's a beautiful church. I don't know if you checked it out or not. Yeah, I saw it's it. It's really yeah. nice. Okay. Yeah, it's really nice and um, it's welcoming. So mm -hmm. my question to you, yeah, mm -hmm. regarding marriage in Islam and Sharia, ah? and uh, because I'm married mm -hmm. and I have problems with the wife, so um, I'm thinking of converting to Christianity. Okay. So what happens to the marriage by default if me, the Muslim, becomes Christian and the wife stays Muslim? Does that cut off the... The, the marriage or the marriage stays no. as, the, as it is? No. See, Christianity does not encourage divorce, even if your wife, she was not a believer. Especially if the yeah, wife, but... it's a woman, you married her before you became a Christian. So you can keep your mar marriage, but you don't have to. But you can keep your mm -hmm. marriage. Uh, but uh, the Bible, in the same time, don't encourage. Uh, there is no partnership between people who they are living in darkness and, living who, and those who are living in light. So a Christian person cannot marry, not a Christian, but this is a Christian person. You are not, when you married this lady, she was no, not. She's, she's Muslim. She's a Muslim, and you were a Muslim when you married she, her, right? Yeah, I was a Muslim. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look how ugly the word, man. <laughs> it is, it is. It is. And you know, the first time you know, I heard you, you saying that, I was like, I was like, what? Let me check my, my contract. I was like, what? Yeah. yeah. You know, if you open the dictionary, you see the Muslim, they say Christian prince is lying. Nikah does not mean the F word. If you Nikah open, is the, if you open the dictionary, Nikah. it says Tanakahat al Ashjar. Exactly. I mean, what it mean? I'll, I'll, the branches go through each other. The you know? branches, yeah, are, are effing each other. <laughs> and, uh, and there is in the book of Al Qurtubi, it says how Shaitan, he have a children because the Quran said, and the he you know? rocks his legs yeah yeah so he have a penis in the right leg a thigh and he have a vagina and the left leg and then he do nikah so how the muslim this they say that the word nikah marriage Prince, this is not hashish man this, this is not hashish, hashish absolutely this uh, and the <laughs> flying car <carpet> and <laughs> 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 you, are, you are fun farouk you know i wish you are here we oh, can have coffee man. together oh <laughs> uh, yeah i wish man i wish yeah I, I pass to the states every year by the way all right no problem so, yeah, yeah. so uh, anyway, like, you know, so you, today you are laughing at Islam. So I cannot say that you are still a Muslim. Day, you are saying to me now you are still day, holding man, yourself the as a Muslim. Is, I want to get it out of my system in a way that it's deleted. It's enough. I mean, I'm, I'm getting tired of making fun. Okay, I, I have a recipe for us, for, for you. It works with every Muslim. Drink common urine. <laughs> <laughs> You will, will never happen. You will get it from out of your system totally. You know? I'd rather I'd rather smoke man than, than you know, doing that. No, to you know, to get anything like bad in our life, uh, you know, all of us, all of us, Safaro, we have a bad things in our life. You know, me myself when I was a kid, I used to fight for any reason. I just look for, for look for a reason to fight, you know. You're an Arab man, you get you know, you have it, temper problems. Yeah, it's okay. so no, we look for it. Like if I look for it, like it's like to prove yourself, you know, it's like a way to prove exactly. it's, that it's our you ego. Are, yeah. You are the man, you know, and you wanna like yeah, I'm the yeah. man, you know. So and yeah. I change yeah. a lot. Like now if I see if, even if somebody insult me, most likely I will try to ignore it as much as I can, you know. Uh, yeah. uh so, so you know, with, with in Christianity, in God he changed you. It changed you a lot. So if you want to get rid of Islam from your system, as you are asking for, I think the only one who can help you best is to read the Bible and see, try to be the same person as Jesus he was. How loving he is, yeah. how forgiving he is, how wise he is, because all of this is coming from wisdom. You know, when we are a fool, we fight for mm -hmm. no reason. I go in the street, exactly. somebody look at me while you are looking. I mean, what the heck? He didn't look, so what? What happened? You know? But you are looking for a fight because this is a foolish behavior. So when a human being, he uses his wisdom. Look like he have a bad yeah. internet. You hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, because your voice cut for a second. So you, maybe you, it's you, the neighbors. Uh, maybe it's the neighbors' connection. Are you the neighbor? Yeah. <laughs> are you the neighbor internet? <laughs> you know, there's, a, there's. I don't know if you saw that website. There's a Muslim. He was asking, "Is it halal?" To steal electricity so I can do a pollution. Oh, the sheikh he said, sure. <laughs> 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 because the purpose, brother, the purpose is, is, a, is a good purpose. <laughs> exactly, brother. <laughs> you know, I've been hearing you for like six years now. Really? 
Yeah, man, six years. And I didn't know you I, did I not. My mother here, you, my father, my everyone. Okay, tell me about your mother and your father. What, they decide to leave Islam. My mother, <laughs> my mother is Shia and my father is Sunnah. Oh, okay. okay. Which one of them? It's he, a mix. Which one of them he love about what we, they hear more? Your mom. So what? You? So what do you think? They called me Farouk. Why? <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> 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 you know exactly why they did not call you Farouk after you. I mean, uh, after they heard me, they called you a long time ago. Farouk. <laughs> My mom was like, I'm glad they didn't call you Omar. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, there are, you know, inside jokes that we do in the house, and that's fine. We have our inside jokes, you know, we joke around the 12 verse that, that, you know, from my mom's side. And I joke around, you know, regarding Muhammad and his Sahaba with my with my father's side. So there is, you know, the ins and outs of jokes. We joke around about it, but you know, they go back in their box. I stay out of the box. Hmm. That is the problem with them. They need more of you, and that's going to come. Well, I will be happy if they have any question. If they are around you, I will be happy to speak to them, or they can you can ask through you, and I will be happy to answer yeah. if they have any questions. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, in, sure. in order to get rid of Islam from your system, I believe the best way is, you know, faith, faith change the nature. I have the faith man towards Jesus. I have the faith towards, you know, all of that, the love, the energy and, you know, the positiveness and all of that. And the educational, uh, you know, side of it. But um, I don't know. I don't know what it is, man. So I until, really until now, you did not consider yourself, you, you, you denied Muhammad to be a prophet or you? Denied long time ago. Okay, so you are out of Islam already, we can say now. You can say so, but how about the feeling inside, you know? My brain what is you, saying something. What do you feel? What do you feel? You know, I'm, I'm, my brain is saying something and my heart is saying something else. So what your it's brain like, is saying, what your, what your heart is saying? My brain is saying everything is BS. Okay. Uh, my heart is saying, you know, it's 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 you know it's doctrinated CP. It's you know since we were kids. Yeah. And you know how it is like it's it's like North Korea. Yeah, yeah. In a way. Yeah. Okay. So how they doctrinated us? How they yeah. you know? You know, I, I will tell you. Them. I will tell you my experience. When you live in the Middle East, what they teach you about the Jews? They are evil. They are bad. Do, yeah. They start with they they start to they start with you can't eat with them and you know yeah. they're not that good. No, actually, and, you know, they start first slowly. time I saw a Jew, I was trying to find if he have a tail, <laughs> 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 because all what they teach us that they are monkeys. You know, they are pigs. They you are monkeys. You should have checked you know? branches, man. That's that. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, this is how much you know they brainwash you when you are uh, you know. We, in Bahrain, they didn't went into the extent of, you know, the monkeys and all of that. Yeah. But, um, you know, they were, you know, polit politically correcting in a way, mm. you know. But what I'm saying. Slowly. Yeah. Still, yeah. I mean, we have the same garbage, you know, where we come in from, yes. me and you. We yeah, speak the exactly. same language. And, uh, you know, their, the culture is, is, is not about thinking logically. It's about being stupid and believe, you know. Yeah, so, exactly. I mean, I sit with my friends and we have debates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we go through these things and they, you know, they agree until they go back to their box and say, no, it's not real. No, this is you're making this shit up. And you show them, you show them the Hadith, you show them the, the, the Quran, you show them everything. It's still they don't get convinced. Yeah, they go it's in denial. No, this is not. It's not about they're not uh, convinced. Uh, yeah, they in, don't in fact, they are. True. In fact, they are. Because they have eyes and they can see, as you said, but uh, yeah. it's a, it's embarrassment. So what we do? It's embarrassment and how big the kufr word is to them. Yeah. So what we do? We yeah, deny yeah. it. You know, this is the easiest way. Exactly. What uh, they, yeah, but, exactly. But what doesn't they're doing. mean uh, doesn't mean if they deny it, it's not there. You know, the, the the always the Muslims and Arab in general, they are like the ostrich. You know, the naama. <laughs> you know. <laughs> they put their head in the sand because they, and now they exactly. think no, nobody can see them no more. The, the wolf is not yes, there. You know? Exactly. Yeah. So they put their head and, and then not, not only that, they are very proud. And because they are so proud about what I don't know, uh, it's hard to speak to them uh, because they are There's so proud. too much ego. Too much. Uh, but by time, you know, like it's a, uh, it, it might take some time, you know, like you know, when you learn English, uh, like, you know, the word upset upset uh, upset yeah. doesn't make sense like somebody is upset what does that mean i mean what set and up have to do yeah. with being angry yeah and then i yeah. learned that the cowboy 
uh, when they try to ride a horse, you know, the horse, yeah. he go up and he sit up and, you know, like, you know, <laughs> when you sit on him. So this is where the word upset came from, from the cowboy. So uh, an, an Arab boy who is a Muslim is like a horse. And he been, you know, he been treated all his life to be, to to believe that he is uh, free, and now suddenly he found that he is just a slave. So he would be upset. He's a slave of Allah. He cannot use his brain. He cannot read. Very if he true. read, he is being, yeah. going to be in trouble. If you open his book, he will be in trouble. So what the Quran says, and the best of you, the 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 the, the scholars, is the one who say we believe. You know, rasikhuna fil alam. So who is the rasikhuna fil alam? Is the one who say we believe, not the one who study. You know, yeah. So like in the yeah. in the Hebrew people, if you say to them, uh, a rabbi, a rabbi is somebody he study. Mm -hmm. The Muslim sheikhs is not the one someone he study is someone he believe according to the Quran. And eating too much hummus. Yeah, it's just you know, like say I believe. The most you say, the more you say, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that you are, that's it, you are a sheikh. You know. The second, the second they ask you a question, Allah knows best, you know, and we solve the yeah. problem. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, for you, uh, I, I think, I mean, it's not shouldn't be hard because already your parents, they are already, you know, somehow laughing at the Quran and, and uh, Muhammad. They're, they're open. They're open people, you know, they're, they're open minded when it comes Wonderful. to that will make things. You believe what you believe. You yeah, know what I mean? That will make things very, very easy for you. It is easier. You know? But, you know, I, I've seen friends. That you know, I'll give them a little bit of the nibda. They turn around and nearly backstab you. So I cannot open up these subjects openly here, yeah. especially with you know some people. Yeah. Well, you it's know, uh, you see, uh, if you uh, always you have to choose your uh, choose as as they say in, your in English, cho yeah. choose your friends carefully. You know, choose your friend yeah, carefully. Yeah. Uh, not everyone is qualified even to to be my friend, and not everyone is qualified to have a serious conversation with him. So a, a topic like this, it should be only uh, open with someone you think you consider uh, to be smart, and that is <laughs> hard to find in the Middle East, because the smart Two one... Two of my friends, you know, very close friends. One is Shia and one is Sufi, uh -huh. and Sunni. Uh -huh. One is diplomatic and one is, uh, you know, uh, uh, a worker in, in one of the big banks here. Yeah. So um, we have these debates and, you know, it goes really nice because, you know, everyone has his own opinion. And I'm like, you know, Islam is an individual thing. It's, it's now today. If you ask a Muslim, what kind of Muslim are you? He will give you his own version of Islam. Yeah. Everyone has his own version of Islam. There is no one that I met ever that went and did exactly what the Sunnah says what the book says they don't but they're in denial like you said they think they are yeah and you know the the both of them the shia and the sunni the second you find them something embarrassing they deny it Embar yeah because you know? i told i told my friend why aren't you wearing black shoes anymore yeah <laughs> <laughs> And he was like, how did you know? He heard me? Did he hear me? <laughs> I heard you saying that once. I went the next day. I was like, Ahmedo, why aren't you wearing black shoes? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> For people who do not know, the Shia, they believe, if you wear a black shoe, your private part will not function in the bedroom. It will, it will be limp forever. It will be limp forever. And the wife, she will not be No happy. Viagra, nothing will save She that. will divorce you, you know? So you have to wear a yellow shoes or a white shoes. Yellow shoes is the best, you know. <laughs> yellow shoes is the best. <laughs> it's bright and it will brighten up the day. What What is your shoes, Farouk? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, all of my shoes are black. Oh boy, nearly, nearly black. So ladies, and it's working ladies, fine, man. Don't ever think to marry Farouk. He have a problem already. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, man, it's been a while, while man. I wanted to speak to you. <laughs> you know, there's a there's a hadith about a person he came to, uh, I think Abu Jafar or Ali. I'm not, I'm not sure. I forgot the, the hadith. And he said to him, yeah. uh, "My wife, she is giving me only girls, you know, baby girls." And he went to yeah. have boys. So he said to him, yeah. "Next time when you have sex with her, do it from behind and spank her. <laughs> and each time you spank her, you say, Ya Ali.' <laughs> yeah, Ali, huh?" <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah. Spank hard and say yeah, Ali and push it. Yeah, yeah, Ali. They worship Ali, and, and then, the and not only that, brother, Muhammad. the miracle happens. 
the guy after that he have seven 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 boys <laughs> <laughs> So and the poor Suleiman you... didn't say inshallah and he, he got no idea. No, he said Ya Ali. He said Ya Ali. He spank and he said Ya Ali. It's a, <laughs> it's a clear recipe. It's very easy, very simple, you know. <laughs> yeah, but you know, the Shia cannot look at their, you know, behind. No, they cannot because they will, they, they they will go blind. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, even oh, the Sunni, a bit, a bit. Aisha, she said yeah. that, she, that she never saw the private part of a prophet of Allah. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is that? So what she was seeing? <laughs> Maybe it's not there, man. What a crazy religion! It so is, my friends, so crazy now, religion. now you know, like in your, you, you are saying you have a trouble about Islam, it's saying clearly as out of your system, but in your heart still you believe in Jesus, correct? Of course. So do you accept him as a prophet or as your God and your savior? I accept him as both. I believe prophet and God and Savior because a prophet cannot work without the God mm. God needs to put the prophet to pass the message because if God comes by himself you know you never know what could happen to humanity by itself because he's so powerful mm. so we cannot imagine what kind of energy and power okay let us, we'll bring let, let us rephrase so has, this you know Jesus the, tr the only prophet actually in the world is God. The rest, they prophesy in the name of the, 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 the prophet. Right. God right. is the one who gave a pro his prophecies to the one we call them prophet. But the fact they are not the one who make the prophecy, they are just delivering the mm -hmm. prophecy, correct? correct? So God is a prophet in the same time, for he is the one who knows the future. He is the one who knew, knows what is going to happen. And he is the one who can be the first and the only prophet the rest of them we call them prophet because they are from our kind and they go down to earth like us you know mm -hmm. they are in the earth and they deliver the the prophecy of god but the fact all prophecies is coming from god so the messiah any prophet did what muhammad did no no none no out of you know 124000 <laughs> 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 yeah, even even there, Muhammad he exaggerating everything, and you know his exaggeration is so stupid. The same, true. The, the yes. Shia and the Sunni, they have tons of stories. Mm -hmm. Like you know, as I, I don't know if you know, that the Shia, as long as you associate yourself with the Shia, the Shia they believe that Allah He sent Prophet Adam in a journey, like the one you see in the part of the Caribbean. You know, <laughs> in a in a ship there was no uh, no land, there was only water. And mm -hmm. he was in the ship for like, you know, 2,000 years or 1,000 years, depending on the story. And then mm -hmm. during the ship, during the, the trip, Adam, he sweat. Uh, uh, Once only. One, 124,000 drop of sweat. From every oh. sweat, Allah created the Prophet, you know, which makes sense. You know? Yeah. And if you... And I mean, the Shia, they can count even how many drops of sweat the guy he has. <laughs> <laughs> All those stories make yeah, sense there's somebody sure. like sitting behind them and counting it, yes, yes. Yeah. I believe that. So, <laughs> so you know, uh, when we say Jesus, uh, uh, for us as a Christians, he is a prophet, yet he's God. Yet he is a, a master, he's a teacher, he's a rabbi, mm -hmm. he is mm -hmm. Lord. So all those names fit with him. For he was between us doing all those things. He prophesied. He yeah. healed. He is a healer. He resurrected. He is a resurrector. Uh, he, he, yeah. he told the truth. He, he said, I am the truth. He gave life. So he is life giver. Uh, even the Quran. Admitted he that, made correct? the blind see. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the Messiah is a very special person. All the prophets of God, they have a job of delivery. Except Jesus. He himself is the word of God and he is God in the same time. This is why in the book of John it says in the beginning it was the word and then the word became a flesh in verse number 14. So the Messiah yeah. and, the, and the word by the way here is not it, the translation say word but it's not really accurate translation. The word is logos. Logos mm -hmm. is the mind, is the will, is the decision, is the plan of God. So the Messiah is the walking, talking, living word of God. So, so he, Logos is a Greek word? It's a Greek word, correct, yeah. Okay. And the Logos okay. is not something new. You see, when, when, the, when the Bible speaks to the, to, the, to the Greek, he speaks in their language, so they understand what we are talking about. So they are, you know, it's using their language. Uh, so the mm -hmm. second you say Logos to a Greek person, 
you don't understand it just a word like in English, you know, just plain English word mean word. The logos yeah. is way more than just a word. It is everything. It is the the is will. There, yeah. Is there an explanation why God um, came down as Jesus? Just him? I mean, why didn't God come down? You know, with as as other prophets, like he did with Jesus. Well, you know, this is the, mean, the, the he, other prophet. They are just prophets. Any you see, you see, when when in, in Christianity, yeah. it would be that Jesus is the only, only person who is the Son of God. The rest are not. So other son prophets. Of God, not biologically, you mean? We, we, this is not biological for sure. But the Quran understand it in a yeah. biological way because the Quran exactly. is stupid. But uh, <laughs> but but for us, yeah, because you know, no, no Christian. You see, it's okay to understand this way. If the Christian believe that God, he have a wife. Her name is Mary. And then they have a son, his name is Jesus, correct? But uh, mm -hmm. the, the Bible and the Quran agree that Mary was a virgin. So obviously, this is not something sexual, right? Obviously. So exactly. the Messiah, the Son of God, he is born from God, and his existence have nothing to do with his birth date. Like a Muslim, he is a smart, he will say to you, uh, well, who, where was the Trinity before the birth of Jesus? You know? Mm. But Jesus, he said, mm -hmm. before Abraham, I am. I am. So he exists before Abraham, and he, his birth have nothing to do with his existence. So yeah. the, uh, the Messiah is not like other prophets. Uh, you know, prophets are people who come and they pass and they die. Uh, Jesus, he exists from before time. The Bible says everything created by him and for him. And Jesus himself, mm -hmm. he proclaimed things which is not for anyone to proclaim, like I am from above, you are from below. So Muhammad copied that. Muhammad, he tried to copy. For him. You know, for yeah. me, actually, I believe I, I, uh, I'm working right now in a book. Uh, Muhammad, uh, the story of Muhammad in Arabic, it doesn't make any sense. I think I think the story of Muhammad is translated from a, uh, from an Aramaic book, and it turned to be, and now what we call it Quran. You know, because uh, every so you're every, saying it was a myth. Uh, I, I cannot say if it's a myth or not, but I can say the story is a flipped upside down. You know? Yeah. The story yeah. is a story is not uh, doesn't make sense. Like you know, you, you mentioned to me uh, names like your name is Farouk, right? Yeah. Okay. But if you if you go and ask the uh, ask yourself uh, some questions, you will find that even the names in the books of Muslims, you cannot really find meaning for them. In Arabic, as an example, uh, you know, Quraysh. Uh, 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 mm. What Quraysh mean? A tribe. Yeah, this or is the name of village. tribe, right? Okay, but this is not true. Quraysh is people who they are like a cowboy, you know, Ru'at. Ru'at, yeah. you know. No, Ru'at, Ru'at, mean Ru'at, you know, the people Ru who they, they, yeah, the, the shepherd, you know. Yeah, this shepherd, is what Quraysh mean, okay. but this makes sense only in the Aramaic. So in the Aramaic, it means Ru'at. In Arabic does not mean anything. So, so Quraysh is an Aramaic word. It's an Aramaic word. All the names actually okay. you see uh, in the Quran are Arama Aramaic words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah, Muhammad, Muslim, even Muhammad is an Aramaic word. If you ask you yourself, know, within these years, yeah, within these years, I was, I was, you know, digging deep, and uh, you know, I found out lots of things that to do with Aramaic and so many stories that were stolen, the seven sleepers, the. The Baqarah, the um, I mean, everything the whole is a book theft. Is a but of everything. but even the remix. names, even the names, the Muslim they have, like you know, uh, 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 you know, the story of Uthman ibn Affan as an example. Uthman mm -hmm. ibn Affan. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Uthman is a person make sense, like a poem. Uthman is a name of a person who mistreated. He yeah. was Uthman. Like, uh, uh, Uthman. Uthman. Yeah. Is somebody. Uthman, but what is? What is Afan? Afan uh, I will tell you. I'm, I'm coming there. So Uthman yeah. is somebody mistreated. He was like uh, people were unjust to him. Mm. And then Afan is the coffin. Mm. So Uthman is a person who was unjustly killed. Muslim, they tortured him. And even they refused to bury him, to bury his coffin. With the Muslims, yeah, they drag them out. They drag him yeah. in the street, and then you will find that Uthman yeah. ibn Affan make 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 uh, make sense. Now, it's not a name; it is a description. Right, right. A after the action, what happened? Exactly. Yeah. So somebody named him, 
Uthman, the son, the uh, yeah, the son of the coffin yeah. who dragged out, who nobody buried him. So he was yeah. he was killed unjustly. So look like. So Afan, 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 yeah, no, Afan, Afan is the coffin. It's not the uh, Afan, no. It's the coffin. Okay. It's the coffin, yeah. Okay. So, so okay. in Aramaic, it makes sense. It is a state. It's a statement, description of what mm -hmm. happened to this man, and then you cannot explain why in the world his name is like that. You know, and we find that the same of the rest of the names. You know, all the names. So, uh, when it's we all study, story, man. It's all a mishmash. When we study, you know, if you want to go deep with the knowledge, then you will find yeah. that Islamic religion. Is a is a is a, is a is a mix of uh, of many things who cannot be cannot be coming from the Arab. Asatir al awaliyin Yeah, it, exactly. The Quran says actually, yeah, in many mm -hmm. places, six seven places, uh, the Arab they say to Muhammad, uh, you know, this is the fabulous of all nations or uh, previous nations, and the reason True. they said they said that to him uh, because simply those stories they all heard. are known. You know nothing new, but I believe yeah. that there is someone he wrote the Quran as a story about somebody. You know, yeah. Like there is a person, his name is Muhammad, and there is a there is a characters, and then even in the Hadith, the characters they show in the Hadith they don't show much in the Quran. Like we don't see the Uthman in the Quran, right? Uthman ibn Affan in the Quran, we don't see him. Right. But we will right. find that tons of his stories, a ton of names. This is why the Muslims do not even know what the names mean. If you ask a Muslim what Abraham means, they do not know. They don't know. What Israel means, they don't know. What Isa? Who is what is Isa? What Moses? They don't know. Yeah. Okay, Torah. What is Torah? They don't know. Injil. <laughs> they don't know. So how this is can be a book was sent to the Arab and you know the Quran says this is the book, we made it in clear details. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so Fasalna Ayatahu, right? Fasalna. So how yeah. how we made it clear and then we do not know. So, either this book it is... It is weird, man. It's weird how they believe in it. I mean, I, I look, I did not believe everything in the Quran. I did not. I mean, even when I was a kid, I remember I used to tell my, my mother, you know, what's this fantasies? How did somebody live this mu this long? How did his foot, Abraham's foot landed in, in Mecca and only in that spot? I mean... When they dig today in Mecca and they do these big buildings, I mean, they have to have the archaeological archeolog uh, people on the site to mm -hmm. check if there is anything from history down there. But there was never, ever anything that they found that connects, you know, Islam to Mecca and, you know, artificial um, artifacts. They, they did not find anything. No, actually, they found, I mean, they found, they found Aramaic. They found Aramaic. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a, a script written in the in the like mud or rocks, you know, but not Arabic. Okay. Aramic, you know. Ah, oh, okay, okay. The places that were closed in Saudi, they just yeah. Some places they found they found Aramic. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, This is why actually you know, uh, this is why the influence of the Aramic language in the Quran. The Quran. This is now there's many many scholars you know believe, who study carefully the Aramic language and Arabic. They believe mm -hmm. that the Quran never was written in Arabic. Never. You know? Yeah, it's. I don't think so too because of you know there was no dots and there was no tashkil. And not, not only this, you know, uh, uh, because always when you translate, when you translate, you will lose something, right? Right. And yeah. you will find a lot of meaning doesn't make sense in the Quran if we read it today, you know, like yeah, uh, uh, you know, like if, like I just showed the hadith when Muhammad he says. Uh, how how long it take to re to recite the Quran? Once he said it was forty days. Then he said <laughs> a month, and then he said twenty days, and then he said fifteen days, and then he said ten days, and then he said seven days. So it depends on how strong the hashish is, my is, man. No, but have, well, let us take this uh, seriously. So if the Quran is a, is a yeah. book, the book is the same, and the Quran is not a changing. Why the recitation mm -hmm. can getting so shorter? It doesn't make sense. Because it doesn't make sense unless what somebody only, doesn't know how to read it. What only makes sense is that somebody was writing a new book mm. from the Aramaic. When he wrote it first time, it take 40 days yeah. to recite it. Then he uh -huh. 
I make more summar summary of it. It take one month. Then he shortened the book. It became a 20. And then he shortened the book more. He make it 15. And then yeah. finally, as he said, he said seven days. So the final summary, and this is what actually the Quran mean. The Quran mean the summary of the holy book. The summary. It's a summary. It's not it's not a holy book. It's a summary of the holy book. Quran. Is it Al Quran? No, is Quran. Real... Quran. Quran. Yeah, but the is way Aramaic you pronounce word. it in Aramaic. Is it Quran? Is a Quran? No. Qur Qur like Qurra? Qurra. 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 It's saying. Yes, yeah. Qurra. Qurra. Yeah. So Quran. Okay. You see in Arabic. You know. You know. Uh, you speak Arabic. Maybe even better than me. So uh, you say. Uh, uh, you say akala yakulu. You don't say aklanan, right? No. There's no way to say aklanan. So. قرأ يقرأ قرآنا does it make sense so شرب يشرب شربانا شربانا no you can't do that yeah so you try to 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 make it go with the Arabic grammar which does not even exist you will find the Quran does not make any sense in the same time is if قرا وراء is what Quran means he said what he saw so Muhammad he saw what he saw nothing, my friend. He saw nothing. Even no. the story says that Muhammad, he did not receive a book, correct? Right. So in order for him to use the word qara'a, qira'a, the Muslim, they use the word now qira'a, the same in recitation, mm -hmm. right? But this is false right. because this is Aramaic word, mean qara wara'a. He say uh, what he yeah. saw. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You don't say but something you did not see. Uh, uh, yeah. Recitation is something you recite from your memory. So, right. So you have it to have it first in the memory in order to say it. Repeating is not recitation. If I repeat after you, you know, that is not reciting. Yeah. You know, I'm repeating. Uh, recitation is a, is a memory thing. So even the story about Muhammad, when an angel, he came to him and he said to him, Iqra. Yeah. You know? Okay. What Iqra yeah. means? Anyone is ask anyone who speak Arabic and you speak Arabic. Iqra means read. Read. If Muhammad, he and Muhammad himself, how Muhammad he understood the word, he said to him, Ma ana bi yani, I do not see. He said, What That's I will what read. He meant. What I will read. What I will read. Okay. But the, okay. ishrab. Ana bi huh? Right. It but did he, do you think he meant, I do not see what to no, read? No, no, no. Ma ana bi self? No, mm -hmm. ma ana, oh, oh, you, you want me, okay. Oh, you see, the Muslim if, say, if he said it in Aramaic, let's say. The Muslim is saying that he meant he cannot read, but read carefully. The guy he just said to him one word. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he said to him, Iqra. So and how, how he God is... didn't know that this guy doesn't read? Yeah. So uh, first of all, how the, how stupid the angel to say to him, read, and the guy do not know how to read. And what the point then? My angel Taiwani. Yeah. <laughs> <Not a Sini>. <laughs> 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 uh, so... <laughs> So when he said to him, read, and the guy do not know how to read, so what the point yeah. of saying, and unless you want to make a miracle, like Jesus said to him, let us say, if Jesus was there, and he said to Muhammad, read, Muhammad will read, because this will is read Jesus. Immediately. You know? <laughs> He'll be... yeah. But Muhammad was so stupid to the point, even the angel could not make him read, and his God. Exactly. Three times in Makkah. So the whole story does not make sense. So uh, right. uh, he said to him, Iqra, he said, Ma ana biqari. Even, even the Muslim, when you read the Hadith, you will see that when the Muslim hadith says, uh, the Prophet, either he was asked, he's saying, I do not know how to read, or he is saying, read what? Even in the translation, because uh, the story is very confusing. You know? It is confusing. Yeah. yeah. And it the story does not make sense. It's... Actually, once there's a, a bunch of Muslims, uh, they wanted to prove me wrong, and they decide to make a video. And then when they ask them, uh, how it's it me recite and Muhammad he just said I cannot recite he just said one word <laughs> he just said it, he, he just said the word yeah if it's yeah, me he repeat, just said the word yeah like I said to me I said said to me say falafel I say I cannot say falafel <laughs> <laughs> you know Man, nobody can 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 beat you with this I mean I, the, I'm telling you I mean the guy he just said I cannot I, <laughs> like you know he just said he said falafel so how in the world he would say to him how that can mean <laughs> That he cannot read. This is this is really stupid. What what the story is saying that Muhammad he said to him, "What I shall read, what I shall yeah. read." And even the, when the Muslim they say that Muhammad was a person who do not know how to write, how to read, 
I don't know no, if you know does. the hadith. When Muhammad he was dying, he said, Atuni bi kitab. You remember the hadith? Bring me a paper and a pen yeah. or something to write. I will write for okay. you. I will write for you. So that means you. he reads. Huh? That means he reads. Yeah, he knows he, how he to read. read. And the Quran explained what uh, the word ummi mean. Ummi is a goma in the Hebrew, which is mm. the from the nations, from umam. You know, umam? Ummi. Yeah, which means it doesn't he is mean not that he's illiterate. Yeah, he is not from the he is not from the people of Abraham. He is not he is the, from the pagan. This is what ummi mean. So in certain time, uh, me, you, everybody was ummi, which means he is mm -hmm. ignorant in the book. He don't have the book of God. So right. uh, uh, even even when when uh, uh, when the Quran speak about Muhammad, uh, Muhammad uh, he says in the Quran uh, that. The people of the book, he, he, he divide the people to two kind of people. Ahlul Kitab wal Ummiyin. So the people of the book is us, correct? Right. All right. Why we are, we are, why we are called the people of the book? Because you have the manuscript. Because we have the script. So the Quran in chapter 2, verse number 78 says, From them, from among them, is the illiterate and the one who knows the book. See it? So Muhammad is from the pagan who do not know the book of God. Have nothing to do and then who, with being able and then to who read. Who brought him the book? Huh? Who brought him the book so he can put all these stories in? Well, no, he do not know the book of God. He doesn't know. Yes, I know. Yeah. This is in the beginning. So this is what we were showing people now that uh, Muhammad, when you call me, Muhammad, he ordered yeah. Zaydu Muthabit to go and learn mm -hmm. and study more in the Aramaic language so he can read for him the books of the Jews and then gotcha. he start copying from there and he put what he can add summary so summary. it was Zaid and Waraka anyone else Waraka is the one who started it but then Waraka he died and when he died the inspiration the of Allah stopped. stopped coming to him yeah yeah it's funny yeah well I'm happy to have you my friend uh, Farooq if there's anything really I can help you with you know, uh, like, uh, so do you today, do you announce Jesus as your Lord, as your Savior? Give me the strike, man. Strike it out. Strike it out of me, man. Yeah, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Do you do you believe that Jesus is your Lord, is your Savior? I believe that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. I mean to that. <coughs> and everybody else's Savior. Do you believe that Muhammad is cannot be from God and he is obviously from he Satan? He can't. He, yeah, I, I believe that he is Satanic. Exactly. 100%. But I'm happy, I believe that. happy to yeah. hear that from you, Farouk. And if you have any time, if you want me to help you with your parents, I will be yeah. honored to talk to them. And for sure, I will speak to them very nicely. I I'll get you. you. I'll get you a sheikh, man. Oh, yeah. I will, I will pay you yes. if you do that. <laughs> but, uh, don't pay me anything. I'll, be, I'll just laugh it off. No, you know, it. hold on. You did not hear what I will pay you. I will pay you in Jannah, brother. <laughs> in Jannah, which house? Give me a big house, my friend. I will give you a, a big bracelet. Palace. I will give you a bracelet of gold in Jannah, brother. <laughs> Not silver, huh? Gold. Do you know the, do you know the, sure. do you know the story of Abu Dahdah? No. <laughs> Abu Dahdah, he, he have a nice, he have a nice wood full of palm trees, you know. So Muhammad, oh. he promised him corner lot if he give him a part the palm trees. <laughs> <laughs> Abu Dahdah. Baruch, listen. I am sure you have a nice villa in Bahrain. What about I will give you a corner lot in heaven and give you a house there, man? <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the virgins, my friend. <laughs> For sure. No, this is this is this is tips. This is nothing. Don't worry about this it. This is just the tips. Huh? They are included. <laughs> like you open the fridge, you will find them all frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to say the uh, password before you open the refrigerator will, because they I might eat you alive. I can open fridges with my long penis, my friend. In the, yeah, in the yeah just say oh, the word God. takbir, you know, <laughs> before you open the door because it might explode in your face. <laughs> wow. <laughs> there <might> explosion there <laughs> for a security reason. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it was a great talking to you, Farouk. I'm really happy for Same you. Same here, man. And uh, if you can bring me a sheikh to talk to me, I will really appreciate that. Do you promise I me you can do that? I will get you a Shia guy. I'll get you a Shia guy. Shia or something, something. different. Okay, you know what? Something what about, different, man. What about bring me one one time Shia and one time uh, Sunni? <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I would love to bring them both. Honestly, together. I will appreciate. I will appreciate that because that would I'll be the most funny. I, I and the, and listen, Farouk. The bigger yeah. you, the, the bigger his beard. 
the better the debate will be. The bigger the amama. The amama. Ah. <laughs> Did you see the videos in Iran? Now they are pushing the amama. <laughs> oh my God! Iran is going to blow up, man. It's going to yeah. hopefully, hopefully, you know, they 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 fix all the issues and you know kick kick them out, kick all these um, well, bearded men out. I don't think so. The, Joe Biden the is supporting them. Yeah, anyway. Joe Biden supporting everybody for, yeah. for his own pocket, for his own um, <laughs> exactly. agendas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah Well, yeah. good to hear you, Farouk. I will be happy to hear you. Habibi, Habibi, uh, thank Allah. you very much Such. for calling. And uh, may the Lord bless you and you. your family. And let us all thank pray so for much. our brother Farouk here. All of you brothers here, pray for Farouk. He accepted Jesus as his Lord. Thank you so much. As his thank you so much. I appreciate not only that. Lot. We will pray to your parents, your family. I don't know how many sisters you have, how many brothers you have. I have three sisters, and I'm the only uh, only guy. That will be wonderful if you can bring them to Christ, my, my friend. Because that will, yeah. because you know, the, the Lord, he says, from their fruit, you shall know them. You, and, you shall know, and the, know them. Yeah. And the Lord, now he appointed you to be ambassador for him within your family. So save your family, yeah. my friend. Save them so they will they will live happy. And even when we So die, there is no divorce tomorrow? Oh, no divorce tomorrow. <laughs> 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 no, the uh, <laughs> no, no. You see, so, you see. If 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 this it is a this, tough this, one, man. If, it's a toxic if, marriage. If, if this woman, you see, Christianity does not encourage divorce because divorce brings problems to the children. You know, I have no children. Oh, that's a different story. But anyway, still, I cannot encourage you to divorce your wife because she's a Muslim. Have some patience. Mm -hmm. Maybe the Lord will help you to bring her to Christ with you, and will change you. Change her the same as he changed you too, you know. Yeah. Just ask yeah. the Lord for help, and the Lord He will help you. But don't read the Quran for her about Harut and Marut. <laughs> 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 you know, maybe you should maybe. go. Maybe you should go right now and tell her. Listen, do you know what we are fighting? She will say to no to you because you are. I told her. I told her. Yeah. I told her that already. <laughs> you told her it's because of Harut and Marut. I get to her Harut and Marut Rabach. What she said, <laughs> she, <don't believe. laughs> she said, I, she, I don't believe in these things. Okay, if you don't believe in these things and you don't believe in any of these, why why are you sticking to it? Yeah, why it's you are still saying the you are same Muslim thing then? How should you believe in those things? It's still the same things? thing, man. It's deep within. It's deep within us. That's the problem. Yeah, she she go in denial. I see, because this is in the Quran. Yeah. You showed her in the. It's in the Quran, right? This is not hadith. What Harut Harut Marut? Yeah, yeah in the she Quran knows, she knows. Huh? Yeah, yeah, she knows. She yeah. knows. Yeah. So yeah, she uh, knows. if yeah. she don't believe in those things, then she, she is out of Islam. Yeah. So here we go. You have a good news. Just tell her you are out of Islam. You know. So what? The, what is yeah. <laughs> Either she have to believe that Harut and Marut is causing you to have a fight with her, or she don't believe in Harut and Marut, and then she is out of Islam. So if she is don't believe in Harut and Marut, then she yeah, is out okay, of Islam. Technically, she is out. But you know, it's very hard for for the person to believe that they're out. Maybe she is afraid from the consequences of her family and you know friends and you know. Yeah, yeah, and the dragons and yeah. all of that. All right, my friend. Well, God bless you, <laughs> and good to have you with Thank us. Thank you so much. Likewise, likewise. Take care. For sure, man. For sure. Take care. Have a good day. Okay. Thank you very much, man. Bye bye. Well, it was a great conversation with our friend Farouk. He is, uh, he's funny, he's, uh, he's smart, and uh, uh, you know. But I'm disappointed, by the way, because I was expecting somebody to debate me, and you know, like you know, like, but. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but anyway, uh, let us hope that Harut and Marut will not join in the bedroom today <laughs> between him and his wife. <laughs> I mean, have you ever heard of a god? He opened a school of Harry Potter to teach black magic and what the purpose of the school? What is the... Look how noble this school is. Amazing school, brother. Harut and Marut, they open a school for the fool. Our tuition is so cheap, and we will teach you how to be cheap. Cheapen your wife so she will fight you, and you'll get divorced, all of you. Join our school and sign the disclaimer. You cannot be a law blamer. For Allah is almighty and his power show in divorce court. Takbir. What a stupid religion. While you know Jesus encouraged us that men and women when they get married they became one, they are united. 
the God of Islam was busy opening a school in the Babylon Tower, you know. And if you ask yourself, why in the heck in the Babylon Tower? <laughs> makes sense, makes sense. I mean, how the angel would come down? Do you want them to jump? Like they have no parachute at that time. So Muhammad, he heard this is a story. This is a fiction story. It exists long before Muhammad. And this is why you see those names, Harut and Marut, these are not Arab too. I mean, what Harut mean? Any Muslim can tell me why their names are Harut and Marut? What does that mean? And actually, me myself, until now, I could not find what Harut and Marut mean. I did read a lot about it, actually. And there's a, too much confusion. I'm, I'm trying, still studying, trying to find what is the origin on the real meaning of... Uh, I'm sure there is a meaning. I'm very sure there is a meaning of Harut and Marut. Uh, but Harut and Marut, who they are angel of God, they are opening school for the Abdul. All right. We have somebody trying to call. Let us see. <clears throat> Remember, please, only Muslims can call us. Hello? Yes, my friend, you are live on air. How are you? Uh, this is very uh, nice to meet you, like, on the talk. I'm, I'm not a Muslim. I'm not a Muslim. You are not a Muslim? No, I'm not a Muslim. Well, sorry, my friend. We take all the Muslims. All right. But, but one thing that I'm very curious is, I just don't understand, like, you know, Allah saying, like, the most craziest thing Allah is saying that he will kill 79, sorry, 72 whores in Jannah, right? Like, yeah. all these things are is all crazy things but still people think he's the god and that's the thing that makes me very angry right yeah no i will answer that's, you that's all okay thank you yeah thank you it's, it's very yeah guys please just we want muslims because it's you know when i say christian call nobody call when i say christians can call nobody call so just hold your horses yeah you know one of the stupid things proving that islam can't be from god I mean, have you ever heard of a God? He promised you, if you believe in me, I will give you 72 versions is not the number. This is the wrong number. You know, most of people, they keep saying the 72 number. The 70 is the lowest reward. Adna ahlu jannah, the lower of the heaven, the bad Muslim, this is the bad Muslim. He will have 72. Eighty thousand little boys. And 72 is for the lowest in the heaven, not for the normal Muslim. Normal Muslim, depending on how good he is, he will have. So here we see in the in, in Jami al Turmudi, it says, at least the least of the people of heaven position is the one with 80,000 servants, little boys, and 72 wives. So the 72 wives is not the number Muslims they will have in heaven. Let us correct our information. The 72 is for the lowest, the worst Muslim. This is the one who entered the last one to the heaven. All right? And as you see, this is the difference in front of you. Uh... And uh, his house, his house is made of tent. It's a tent. And this is because Muhammad is a Bedouin. So imagine the heaven as a tent, and the tent is made of from pearl, as you see. And, uh, and you know, it's covered by those things too. And this tent is so big, goes all the way from Damascus, all the way to Yemen, the capital of Yemen. So your tent is like, a, you know, I don't know, or the distance between Damascus and the capital of Yemen, Sana'a, uh, I don't know, a thousand, two thousand miles, I'm not sure, you can measure it. Mad, you know, crazy stuff. But this is alone, as, as our friend, when he called, he said, if this is from God, God is not a pimp. You know, when God, he created Adam and Eve, he created Adam and Eve. Adam was in heaven, wasn't he? Muslim, they agree. You see, there's heaven, by the way, this is different between Christianity and Islam. The garden of Adam and Eve in Christianity, it was in the earth. It wasn't, never was in the sky. In Islam, it was in the sky. 
and that will make it even more worse to the Muslims. Why? Because here we go, Adam and Eve in the real heaven, in the in the heaven, and there's only one Adam and one Eve. So why when Adam go back, he will have all those numbers? What for? And what a woman, one woman can do, a thousand women or, or the opposite cannot do. If a one woman, you see, if what, what a man he want exactly. Is it about having endless number of women? A man he care to have a woman, she loves him. And the man and the woman, she need a man, he loves her. And not only that, if you calculate the numbers, actually, according to Muhammad, uh, a man, when he have orgasm, he will spend 70 years just for the orgasm alone. So he start the orgasm now. It's going to take him 70 years. So if we if we use our calculator, I don't know how many of you are good in mathematics, and the lowest heaven, the lowest heaven, Sorry, the, the lowest in heaven, he will have 72. And remember, there's different hadith says that the 72, each one of them, she have a wasifa. Wasifa is an assistant, a maid. And then the way in the maid, she have other maid. And the maid, she have other maid until we have 72. So now we have 72 x 72. 72 x 72. And then this is 5,184 women 5184 women then each woman he will spend just just orgasm not the whole sex the orgasm alone is 70 years let me use my calculator hold on 72 x 72 5,184, correct? And now X, 70 years. Three, 362,000 uh, years and 888. So for the man to come back to the first woman he stepped with her before, he need, he need 362,000 years to come back. So this woman, who he slept with her first one, she have to wait for 362,000 years. So what the point? And not only that, all those women, they look the same. They have the same hair, the same voice, even they sing the same song, like, like that Barbie, you know? They have a battery. So what the point? And all of them, their name is Hur. They have the same name, the same look, the same face, the same voice, the same legs, I don't want to go in details. And not only that, all the men, they will look like Prophet Joseph, according to Muslims. Prophet Joseph. Who is Joseph? They don't know. They say Prophet Joseph. What Joseph mean? Yosef? I don't know. Okay, how Prophet Joseph look like? According to the Quran, Prophet Joseph, he was so sexy to the point when women, they saw him, the women of the Pharaoh, when they saw him, uh, they cut their, their hands. You know, like they were doing things with their knives. Joseph, he come in the home, in the palace, and women, they start catching their hand with the knives, and they did not even notice. Even me, I don't do that to women. I mean, I'm so good looking, by the way. I'm just joking. Okay, don't take, don't say that. I take, I take it back. You know, everybody makes some wrong saying, like Joe Biden. Consider it one with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, and the Muslim by the way they have articles uh, about Yusuf Joseph how good looking he is if you read them you will go crazy uh, if Muslim women are watching and you want to read any article about Prophet Joseph and you want to do not to go like to bed and you are thinking about bad things, don't read those articles. Uh -uh. 
So if you go in the Quran, the Quran says, let me let me go and find the verses actually. I mean, how silly, how stupid this book. This is God telling us how good looking Yusuf was. What the heck does that mean? Are you serious? This is God? All right. Let us find the verse. Uh, my stupid keyboard. Hold on. In chapter uh, uh, chapter twelve. Verse number fifty. <laughs> So when the king, according to the Muslim translation, bring, he said, bring him into me. But when the messenger came to him, which is Joseph, Joseph said, go back to your Lord and ask him, what is the state of mind of the ladies cut, who cut their hands? <laughs> the king said to the ladies, what was your affair when you did seek to seduce Joseph from uh, this uh, through yourself? Lady said, Allah preserve us. Only if we evil know who we against him. Uh, what the heck is his story? So when those women, brother, they saw Prophet Joseph, who is so sexy and you know it, and they have hand, they have in their hands knives. And you know, they start cutting their hands with the knife and they did not feel the blood is coming. They did not feel their finger, oh, my finger fly. No, they did not feel it because simply, Joseph is very sexy. Very, very sexy. You know? And this is why, actually once I was, uh, <clears throat> I was doing a seminar in the Philippines and I was talking about how Joseph looked like. Then a Filipino brother, he's a very, you know, very funny, humble, humble person. He, st he stood up, he said, are you saying, uh, my name is Joseph, do he look like me? The guy, he have no teeth, he look really, you know, I mean, he's very humble, he's making fun of himself, but he look really horrible, you know? So he said, uh, my name is Joseph, are you saying, Joseph, I hope he don't look like me? <laughs> His teeth is gone, His, I mean, so he looked like me, but uh, my name is Dodef. I said, hey, Dodef, no, you look better than me, brother. Sit down. <laughs> yeah, so all the Muslim in heaven, all Muslim men, they will look like Joseph. And all of them, they will be in the age, the age of the Messiah. And all the women, they have the same look. You know, once, uh, once a Muslim woman, she said to me, uh, you said, you lied, you said... Uh, uh, women, they will have nothing in heaven. In fact, the prophet, he said uh, that women, they will be 70, uh, seven, sorry, uh, yeah, 70 times more pretty, 70 times more pretty. All right. So I said, okay, well, let us see how that work. 70 times more pretty. If we go here, let us open like an empty page. So we can study this. So imagine <clears throat> Muslim women, when they go to heaven, they will be 70 times more pretty. Let us type some numbers here. So let us say we have three women. First woman, her name is Aisha. We will use the word, the letter A. Aisha. The second one is Fatima. The third one is, let us say, Zainab.
So let us say Fatima, she was twice more pretty than Fatima. Let us put the number two. She is twice more pretty than Fatima. And Fatima, she was a three time, or let us say one double. Maybe I should make it the opposite from the left to the right. Let us do that. Hold on. You know, you know, for us and as Arab, we use the oh, I, I did it oh, everybody. But anyway, let us type the letters. A F and then Z. All right. So each one of them is twice more than pretty than the one before her. So if we give the beauty to Zainab as one, let us say, Zainab, she is number one. Doesn't mean she is number one, she is the lowest. Fatima, she is twice more than Zainab. So she is twice, two. Aisha, she is three times than Zainab. And now we will use the method Muhammad he promised. 70 times more pretty. You will notice that nothing changed. Because now Zainab x70 This is the change of her beauty. Fatima x70 This is the change of her beauty. Aisha, X70. And this is the change of her beauty. Nothing changed. So Zainab, she was ugly in earth. She is still ugly in heaven. For now Aisha, she is 210 times more pretty. Fatima, she is 140 times more pretty. And Zainab, she is still 70 times more pretty. So I said, when I said to her, well, you're still ugly. You were ugly in earth, you are still ugly in heaven. Because ugly and beauty is about percentage comparing you to others. So if I actually became 210 times more pretty, and I asked her, all of them, they will be 70 times more pretty. She said, yes, all of them, they will be 70 times more pretty. I said, wonderful. That's me, nothing changed. Nothing changed. You're still ugly. Same time, what is the point of being 5,000 more times pretty if you are going to be jailed in your tent? Nobody see you, you see nobody. What do you do with this beauty? The Quran says, قاصراتٌ في الخيام They will be jailed in their tents. We cannot erase this thing. All right. So if you go in the Quran, you will see the Quran saying, قاصراتٌ في الخيام What the translation says, they will be restrained, restrained, they are in jail. So now you are pretty and you are in jail. How silly this promise is. This is why Islam not only does not make sense, Islam just is stupid. And you know, God is not a pimp. 
According to Muslims, Allah He spent 1,000 years to soften the skin of each one of them. Look like Allah He never heard of something called Vaseline. 1,000 years. How come the Muslims they say Allah if He wants something to be? He said be is going to be. Yet it take Him 1,000 years to make the skin smooth. Do we have any Muslim would like to join us? Do we have any Sheikh? Well, we are so happy our friend Farouk, he left Islam today. And we pray for his family. I'm not going to keep you long. I am really excited to see good news today about getting rid of this idiot uh, party controlling the House and the Senate. I hope that something good will happen. I did vote today and I will vote always against evil I don't vote just for party I vote against evil doesn't matter what party is and Muhammad is the head of the snakes and all the promises in the Quran proving to us that he is the devil he cannot be from God and no Muslim can prove us wrong they are so good in a very funny way after I hang up I finish you will see the comment in the comment section you will die laughing we sit here we ask them to call us they don't right Hisham saying to me there is a channel make make non-muslim wear hijab well my friend aren't you ashamed even of the hijab here we go you mentioned the hijab the hijab behind the story of the hijab is Umar al-Khattab Umar al-Khattab, he is the one who was watching Saud. I've been to them. Huh? She was doing poo poo. I wish that the hijab is even coming from your prophet. Umar, he keep asking Muhammad to order his women to wear hijab. Muhammad, he never respond. Watch and laugh at your hijab. And you know, Muslim women wear hijab, but what, what does this have to do with decency? They wear hijab. Do you want me to tell you about a friend of mine? He was in the high school. He chased a girl wearing burqa. And amazingly, she is in the same direction of his house. He keep following her, speaking to her, saying you know, dirty words. And then this girl, she went to his door. She got inside his house. He thought she is going to tell his family about what he did. She know him. It turned to be his sister. So what hijab is about? It's just a sign of stupidity. Uh, here the story. This is Sahih Muslim. I can show it to you from Sahih al-Bukhari. Umar al-Khattab was spying at the wives of the Prophet at night. So Aisha reported that the wives of Allah Messenger used to go out, they do poo-poo, in the cover of the night when they went open field in the outskirts of Medina for easing themselves, which means farting, poo-pooing, you know, you know better. Allah Messenger asked, he said to him, Omar, he said to Allah Messenger, ask your ladies to observe veil. Who is the one asking for the veil? Omar. But Allah Messenger did not do that. Why? Why he did not do that? So there went out Sauda, daughter of Zama, the wife of Allah Messenger, during one night when it was dark. She was told, started ready. Omar called her saying, Sauda, we recognize you, yeah, Sauda. So Sauda, she was doing poo-poo. And Omar, during the time she was doing poo-poo, he said to her, we recognize your ass, Sauda. So all the hijab you are proud about is because of an ass of a wife of Muhammad and because he have a perverted friend. And this is telling you how coward Muhammad is. Imagine my wife should go out to do poo-poo and I have my friend, he chased my wife in the darkness and he said to her hey i saw you you are soda you try to hide yourself and not only that the story continued to became more awkward that allah he agreed with umar about the hijab so umar he says Wafaqani rabbi. some different hadiths i agree with my lord some hadith says my lord agree with me so my lord agree with my judgment this is muslim translation in three what are they? The location of Abraham, 
the hijab and the prison of of Badr. Other place, he add more. Look at this. My Lord agree with me. I said, Allah apostle, I wish you a station of Abraham. Allah, he took it within the Quran as, as, as Omar, he said. I said, let your wife shoot to cover themselves by hijab. Allah, he took it and he made a verse about it as I said. I said, may Allah divorce you. The chapter of divorce, chapter 65, verse number 5. Allah revealed as I have said. Look, guys, does it say the same as have as I said? So the verse, the same as I had said was revealed. Do you see it? So Mr. Hisham, who is a, a hero in the text, speaking about the hijab, making people, you know, those women, they try it for fashion. But go and see what your women, they do in the Middle East. They are wearing hijab, but drugs, prostitution. What hijab is for? Since when hijab will make a woman decent or a bad woman? Don't you see that women, they are burning the hijab in Iran by millions? But look what happened now. Because of what you mentioned, you got your prophet busted. Your prophet was copying Quran from a guy, his name is Omar. And the one who made the hijab verses is Omar. The one who made the verse about divorce is Omar. The one who made the verses about the Kaaba is Omar. So what Muhammad did? Not only that, Muhammad, he said, if there is a messenger or a prophet will come after me, that would be Omar. So obviously Omar, he knew that Muhammad is a fraud. He is copying him. And here you ask yourself, how the Muslim they say in the Quran say, nobody can make Quran like Allah. And then we find that Omar, he made Quran and Allah take his Quran. I thought nobody can make Quran. <laughs> how many of you say the reference? Hey people, did you say the reference? Always if you want to find something, to find reference of what we are showing you, you can type Al-Bukhari, uh, hadith number 402, or you can search like here, so the verses, the verse, like you have to type the words exactly in Google, and you will find, Google will help you right away. This is the link, in case you like to save it, your reference, so if a, if a Muhammadan ever, he come to you, and he spoke about his amazing Quran, which is for us very lovable, you can get him busted with this. The amazing Quran is about the ass of Sauda, the wives of Muhammad fighting throwing tomatoes on him, tomato, not peace upon him, tomato on him. Even the Quran says they're having strike against the Prophet, strike. And the Muslim, they say to us, the Muhammad was the best of mankind. He treated them, his wife, so nicely. And then we will find that the wives having a big fight with Muhammad to the point he needed Allah to be involved. Threatening them. I will divorce you if you don't repent. So my friends, I hope today we have a good time. Don't forget to download our videos, share it with your friends. And don't forget to pray to our friend Farouk from Bahrain. Uh, and if you are from Bahrain, you heard his accent, you know. Uh, we pray that his family, they will accept Jesus too. And I pray too that he will be able to bring me some sheikhs. Shia or Sunni doesn't matter, because that will be fun and education at the same time, educational. So I wanna say thank you all for being here. If you like our channel, subscribe. If you like to support us, we have a link there in the blue message. And if you don't like to do anything, that's your business. The Lord, he says, from their fruit, you shall know them. And our fruits, we bring people to Jesus. And when we bring them to Jesus, Jesus is the one who will save them, not me. So we pray that the Lord, the Messiah, our Lord Christ, who he said, I am the living God. I am the light. I am the truth. I am the way. I am the resurrection. I am. And only me. The only begotten son of God. I am your savior. We pray to him that he will save the Muslims from all the delusional lies of Muhammad, who the Muslim, they believe. And they agree that this man was bewitched. How in the world you follow a bewitched man and you leave the Lord 
of Lords, the King of Kings, the Savior, the Messiah. Shame on you. The one who follow a pimp, he will end them in the pimp house. And the one who follow the Messiah, he will be in his holy kingdom. The Messiah, he said, not everyone say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. The Messiah don't promise a key for heaven for filthy, lousy people. He promised the key of heaven, salvation, if you do his will. Not everyone say to me, God, God. It's not enough to say to him, God, God. Muhammad, he say to you, just say Shahada. Just say Shahada for the devil. He want to take you down. He make it so easy. He said, if you touch the black stone, Allah erase your sin. If you repeat, Alhamdulillah, 100 times, Allah erase all your sin. How easy. That how the devil, he deceive you. He encourage you to do more sin. Even Muhammad, he said, Allah the Almighty, if he said, if you don't commit sin, Allah will destroy you. And he would replace you with nation who do commit sin and they ask for forgiveness. Does God he love the one who commits sin? And he will destroy those who don't commit sin. What kind of religion this religion is? This is totally the opposite of what Jesus he said. I came for the sick, not for the healthy. Came to do what? Came to save them. When the when Muhammad he said, if you don't commit sin, Allah will erase you from existence. He declared himself to be the devil. For this is exactly what the devil he want to say to you. Do sin more. But Jesus said to the women, sin no more. Muhammad is saying, do sin more. For if you don't commit sin, Allah will demolish you. Do you see it? This is their religion. This is their books. This is their reference. This is their translation. And this is authentic. Do we need more proofs that Islam is satanic? How in the world does God, he want me to commit more sin in order to survive? And why he want to destroy me if I don't commit sin? This is against the logic of justice, against what God he teach about not, never disobey me. So Muhammad, he declared clearly that by disobeying Allah, you live. If you obey Allah, you die. How then that can work if Allah is God? This is a teaching of a Satan man, Satanic man. He worships Satan. He deceives people, encouraging them to do more sin. The whole point of Islam is asking for forgiveness. It's not about sin. This God is lonely. He need people to beg him. He's an idiot. If you don't commit sin, I will punish you. I did not create you to be good. I created you to be bad, to do bad. For if you do bad, you have to beg me. What does that mean? Allah is not as self-sustained as the Muslim they claim. Allah, he is a person who need a shrink. He enjoy torturing people for the sake of torture. For the joy of it, he enjoy it. When you beg for forgiveness, this is a torture. Especially if you did sin, just because you know, if you don't commit sin, you will be punished. He literally 
will destroy you. How that can be from God? The devil Muhammad cannot fool a true believer. Only pimps, false people, they can be deceived by such a pimp, such a liar. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you all. This is your brother Christian Prince who has serving you humbly for today. And we see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is a fraud. And we prove it every day. Take care.